single Saturday. And y'all listen to us teach. Bring it up. Yet nobody has the sense enough to come and ask any questions. Bring it up. I know you hear exactly what we're saying. T. I'm speaking to every single person that's at Busy B right now. T. Bring it up. The Bible clearly says that you're not supposed to be buying and selling on the Sabbath day. Yet every single Saturday we come out here and y'all pay us no attention. You have no right to say Black Lives Matter when the black guy gave you commandments and you won't follow them. Right. You're not supposed to be buying and selling. As a matter of fact, give me Psalm chapter 120, verse 5. Bring it up. Y'all gonna get the scriptures today. Bring it up. I'm sick and tired of seeing my people struggle. Teach. And every single Saturday we bring y'all answers but you pretend like you don't hear us. Dude. You gotta read. The book of Psalms, chapter 120, verse 6. Once again, this is for every person at Busy Bees. Read. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. So the Bible says that our souls, we have no choice but to live in America with our oppressors. It says that our soul, read again, I don't want to mess it up. Read. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. Peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So your enemies set up these institutions, they set up these Walmarts, they set up these loans, and give our people money for businesses, and you patronize those businesses. Absolutely nothing wrong with supporting a black business. But on the Sabbath day when the Bible says you're not supposed to be doing that, you're not supposed to be buying and selling on the Sabbath day. Right, right. We tell y'all this every single Saturday. Right. And it says that when we speak for peace, your enemy set up for war. So how is our enemy set up for war? Right. He gives you things like WAP, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion, that says it's okay for our sisters to be whores. And our people are going to continue to support it. Every single person coming out of Walmart and every single person that busy be, today is your day to make a change. Read it again. The book As a matter of fact, no. Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Come on, keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Y'all going to get these scriptures today. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Read it remember the Sabbath day. The Bible says that we are supposed to remember the Sabbath day. It says to remember the Sabbath day because at one point in time we were doing it. And then we stopped doing the commandments of God. It is the reason why you see our people in the downtrodden state that you see right now. Right. It's the reason why our people are the only ones out of all of the music that exists on the earth. We're the only ones that make music talking about the degradation of our people. Right. And then we dance to it like it's okay. You got a song that comes on the radio and your baby girls are listening to it. There's some holes in this house and then y'all gonna dance to it. Get out. No, no. What kind of people does that? Nobody but the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American people. Read it again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So on the Sabbath day, it is a day of the Most High God. And in that day, there are specific things that we're supposed to be doing. But because you make the choice to not do it, bad things is the reason, or bad things is what happened to us. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Read it But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments. So the commandment that he just gave you was to remember the Sabbath day. But if you make the choice to not do it, read. And his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What's going to happen to our people that don't remember the commandments? Verse 16. No, verse 15 again, the end part. Curse, uh, uh, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, in you not remembering the Sabbath day, in you consistently making the choice to not listen to the law, statutes, and commandments of God, curses are going to happen to you. Here's one of the curses. Read. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. 
So you're going to be cursed in your city. You're going to be cursed in your field. How are you going to be cursed in the city? And how are you going to be cursed in the field? It's fine. It's fine because nobody's fine. How are you going to be cursed in the city and cursed in the field? You're going to come to the west side of Atlanta. You can go to the south side of Atlanta. Pretty much anywhere in the inner cities, you're going to always find out people in the projects, in the ghettos, in the slums of America, no matter where you go. In every single city in the United States of America, so-called black people always live in the ghetto. Always live in the ghetto. And then, when the so-called white man wants to take over, he puts a Zaxby's and a Chick-fil-A in your neighborhood, and you think, oh, we coming up. Really no, but that. you don't realize that he's taking your property from you. Really That's how you curse in the city. Really you don't even own your own property. Right. They come and take your lands and set up their institutions. I grew up in this neighborhood. There no Walmarts or no Chick-fil-A's or no Zaxby's in this neighborhood. Yeah. What that means is they're coming to buy you out, to push you out, for you to find somewhere else to live. Read. Verse, uh, give me verse 48. Teach. Verse 48. Therefore, thou shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So no matter what you do in this life, this same enemy that has you cursed in the city and cursed on your job, cursed in the field, what is he going to do? And from top, from top. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. Wait, so now you're going to have to serve your enemy. The same man that keeps taking all your, all your possessions. The same man that come and get your children and say that you're not even qualified to care for your own children. He's going to have to serve your enemy for what? Which the Lord shall send against thee because you keep making the choice to break the commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That means you cannot buy today. You cannot sell today. Sunday through Friday, do your thing. But on this one specific day, you're not supposed to be doing it. Read. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So every single thing that you're going to need in this lifetime, you're going to have to go to your enemy to get it. And then what is he going to do? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So not only did the so-called man take everything from you, but your ancestors, your grandmothers, your great-grandmothers, put them in slavery, had them serving them. You are the gods on this earth. You shouldn't be serving nobody. Right. But because you continue to make the choice to break the commandments, we're going to always be at the bottom. Read verse 29. The book of Deuteronomy 28 verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. So the Bible says that the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, are going to be groping at noonday. What does that mean? Because that's exactly what we do. We try our best to place our foundation or our understanding in anything. We look to different religions. We look to education. We think that we're going to look to Kamala Harris. But Kamala Harris was the same one that would not prosecute the, the cops in the uh, case of Oscar Grant. Bring it out. Bring it out. But our people think that just because she has a, a black face, oh, now, now we have our freedom. My brother. What, what's your name, brother? I, I, I got it. What's your name, brother? What's your name? Sloan. You say your name is Shalom? Sloan. Sloan. Yeah. Do you, are you from this area? Yeah. What, what part specifically? I'm from Milo. Are you from Atlanta? Yeah. Are you from this side of town? Yeah. How long have you been in this side of town? All my life. All your life? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Do you remember what this neighborhood used to look like? Give me a... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Do you remember what, what, what yeah. tell, me, tell me about what you remember about this neighborhood. It used to, it wasn't normal like this. When you say it wasn't, you, wait, wait, you say it wasn't normal. Yeah, it wasn't normal. What like do you mean by when you say it wasn't, it wasn't normal like this? Like, we're more civilized now. So because we, what makes us more civilized now? I mean, I think at, at this crisis, bro, we're all moving a little equal now. You feel what I'm saying? You know how long it took for us to get here? So you think that, I want to make sure I understand you correctly. You're saying that because the neighborhood has changed, it's showing that we've become more equal. Yeah, it's showing that we've become one. 
Okay, okay, I understand your point. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 40. I want, I want you to pay attention, brother, because what you just said was kind of important. Just because, here's, here's, I'm going to let the scripture speak, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with your point. Watch this, listen very carefully. Hold up, hold up, hold up, my bad. What, what is that y'all reading? We're reading the Bible, King James. Bible. Okay. Yes, sir. King James. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee, uh -huh. in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. So you said that just because these uh, the neighborhood has changed, and from your perspective you think it's changed for the better, yeah. it's made us equal. Okay. So what in this neighborhood, being that you're from this neighborhood, what in this neighborhood do our people own? Bring it out. Bring it out. What do we own? Because, because, and I, I asked that question specifically because you said that because it has gotten better, we're, it shows that we've now become equal. So my question then is, anything in this neighborhood, what is it that we own? You know what? That's 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 very important that you ask that, right? Because I don't think we own enough for anything. Get out. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. the problem. We don't own enough for everything. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're not accepted everywhere we go. Okay. Know what I'm saying? Okay. That's why we're not accepted everywhere we go. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't know. We we, we got to make the best out of it right now while we're going through crisis. So, so you say we have to make the best of this situation yeah. because, because, what, because why again? Because we're going through crisis. This is the best time for us to stick together. As a matter of fact, no, drop that. Give me a... Uh, Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 50. Okay, I want you to pay very close attention. Because what I want you to understand before you leave today, our job is not to be equal to what these other nations of people are doing. Right. God said that you are a God on this earth. Right. So your desire shouldn't be to be equal. You should want to be in rulership. Right. Right. You don't want to own Let me rephrase that. Owning is, is very good. But us trying to be like what they are doing or what they're setting up, it's not for us. Because right. the Bible says that the world was made for us. That's so right. What we're, we're supposed to be ruling. Right. But because you mentioned about that pandemic, I want you to listen very, very carefully. Because what I was saying earlier is the reason why you see our people always in the ghettos, always in the hoods, always in the worst places of society, is because we constantly keep making the choice to do the opposite of what God says. Right. We say black lives matter, but then we'll read in the Bible and show you that God is black and that he gave you specific things to do and they would say, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. Listen very carefully. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world. So I want you to take, a look, take into consideration everything you see going on in the world right now. It says great misery is going to happen to those people that's going to be living in latter times, read. Because they have walked in great pride. But understand thou for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. So it says that the reasons why we keep having to be subjected to these things, the COVID-19, the, 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 the worst, popula well, not worst population, us being a downtrodden society, is because of our pride. You know what that pride is? Pride is when we show you in the scriptures that there's something that you're supposed to be doing yeah. and then you make the choice. Like you ask, it's coming out of the Bible. Everybody in the, in the world knows that the Bible has laws, statutes, and commandments, and it has answers. That's There's a reason why when people get in perilous time, the first thing they say, oh my God, or Jesus, they call it on a higher power because right. they know that there's some type of power in it. Right. We're so, not supposed to live by pride. Exactly. Exactly. But that's why the scripture says that the reason why these things happen is because of our pride and it's because we keep making the choice to break the commandments. Hold on real quick. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. No, no. I want you to understand something real quick, brother. If, I, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you heard this information before? I read the Bible. No, what, we're, what, what specifically what we're teaching? Have you heard this information before? I mean, yeah. Okay, so then if I were to ask you what is your nationality, what would you tell me? What's my nationality? Yes, when I, say, when I say nationality, what I'm asking is the nation of people that you come from. Who is the nation of people that you come from? Israel. Right? You come from Israel. Israel. That's that's the nation of people you come from? Yeah. Israel is the land. Right. 
So what? You're, so uh, let me correct you. you. You come from the Israelites. Yeah. Israelites. Right. You've heard that term before. Yeah. Where, where did you learn that? I learned that in prison. You learned that in prison. Yeah. Okay. How long? Were you? Long enough not to go back. Bro. That's that's good. Okay. So now I want you to I want you to listen up very carefully because well how how so the person that taught you what exactly did they teach you? I mean, it's never enough. Look, well, it's what I'm asking specifically, if, if you know about the Israelites, what about the Israelites did they teach you? What about the Israelites? Yes, what did they teach you? Well, I can't, let me see. It's basically, I, I was basically learning about, you know, Muslim. You know, it's a big part of Muslim. Okay, okay, I see. So you didn't learn about the Israelites. You were learning Islam, and they were telling you that you're Israel. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you why that's a little bit confusing. Uh, give me the one. Uh, sorry. I'm going to tell you why it's confusing. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I want. I think it's uh, the Exactly. That's exactly. That's exactly what I want. All the guys are No, no. The reason why that's confusing, brother, is because Islam or Muslims believe in Islam. Okay. Islam teach according to the Quran. They'll read out of the Bible, but they won't do anything that the Bible says. Right. You see what I'm saying? The God that was given to our people, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, is not the God that they profess. They profess Allah, who was a different God of this Bible. You understand what I'm saying so far? It's only one God. Though. It, 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 I, I, I actually it's only one God. But the same that, that, uh, the God that they try to put on to us is not the God that this Bible is talking about. Does that make sense so far? What I'm saying? I'm a, no. yeah, listen real, watch this read. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 11 Hath a nation changed their gods which are yet no gods? So here's my question. Did, when they were teaching you about Islam, did they tell you of any prophecies or anything that was mentioned in the Quran that was supposed to come to pass? Like what, 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 why did they say you should believe in, in the, uh, the Quran or the Islam or the Muslim faith? It's not believing in the Quran or the Muslim faith. It's about believing in one God, right? Okay. But, okay, so then what is the requirement? What does that, every single religion on this earth is always about what can God do for you. Right. Okay? Right. Always about what God can do for you. Right. But the difference in what this is talking about, this is talking about us. We are the ones that broke God's commandments. So we are the ones that have to get back right. It's what we have to do to get ourselves right, right with Him. Right. That's the major difference between what we're teaching and every single religion on the face of this earth. Right. So yes, there is only one God, but that one God gave us laws, statutes, and commandments for us to follow. That's and right. the reason why we continue to be in the situation we're in is because we make the choice to not do it. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying so far? Mm -hmm. and, they, and they didn't teach you none of that. No. So watch this. Give me Numbers 15, 38. I'm going to show you one of the things that this God of the Bible says that we're supposed to be doing. Right. Me go. It's, me a lot, listen, it's a lot of stuff in this Bible that we're supposed to be doing that we don't do. That's listen to this. Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Read it Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Have you ever heard of fringes before? Fringes. 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 Do you know what fringes are? No. Can you tell me? I, 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 I might do, but... So, for every single one of the gold, these gold things that you see on the uh, bottom of each one of our shirts, mm -hmm. these are called fringes. Mm -hmm. Keep on reading. It's going to explain to you why we're supposed to wear fringes. But this, listen, listen, the point that I was making was God gave us commandments for us to follow. Yeah. This was one of the commandments that he gave us to follow. And he gave it to us for a specific reason. Listen. And that they put upon fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them so it says that the point of wearing these fringes is so that we can remember to keep the commandments not only to remember it but to do it doesn't mean doesn't matter if you just remember it because the whole point is the reason why we're having to deal with what we're dealing with now is because of sin. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. According to the Bible, He's sin clean. is when you break God's laws. Yeah, when he started cleansing the earth, right? That's that's at a later time. 
And what I'm speaking about now is sin is when you break God's laws, okay? So if, we, like, for example, when it says that we're supposed to wear fringes and then we don't do it, that's considered a sin. Right. Just like, do you have any children? Yeah. You have any, so let me ask you this question. Do you give your, how, how old are your children? 13, I got five. So, okay, so no, no, that's fine. So, do they, are they with you? Yeah. Okay, good. So do you give them specific chores throughout the week to do? Yeah. All right. So let's say, for example, you tell your son, son, for the rest of the week, your job is to take out the trash. And let's say you tell your daughter, for the rest of the week, your job is to wash the dishes. Simple enough, right? What, what would happen if your children disobeyed? I mean, there will be consequences, you know. So Why? Why? Yes. Because they didn't obey. So, God is the Father. We are the children of Israel. That's right. right. He gave us commandments to follow. The commandments, we're fringes, other little commandments that we're supposed to do. So when we don't do them as the Father, what happens? <laughs> you know what happened. Yeah. But so now you see the point that I'm trying to make. Yeah. I want you to understand that's that's all we're teaching. That's why I was yelling at them because they listen to us every single Saturday. But everybody don't think like this, bro. You know that, right? What? I will agree to a certain extent. You know, it's, it's <clears throat> Go ahead. Make your point. You no. Know, it's different ways that you explain certain things to, to, to certain people, bro. You know I what I'm saying, bro? Like how you talking to me right now, bro. Every other average young blood my age, bro, they wanna understand what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? It'll be like speaking Spanish. They don't know nothing about the Hebrews or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if I said something to a young cat about Abel and Cain, they don't know nothing about none of that. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, I, I, I can respect that, but here's, here's my problem with that. It's very simple. If the Bible says, do not buy on the Sabbath day, what does that mean? Don't do it. So how simple is that? Bring it up. God's commandments are not hard for us to do. Right. What happens is, we hear it and make the choice to do the opposite of what it says. Just like everybody at Busy Beats. They hear us every single Saturday say, stop breaking the Sabbath. Do not buy and sell on a Sabbath day, and that's what you get. Right. And as long as we keep doing that same analogy I gave you, you as a father give your children something to do, and then you, they make the choice to not do it, you say, consequences are going to happen. Yes, Thank you, boy. God also said that, well, how do I say it? Why are you thinking about it? I want you to listen to this reading. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. Read it from the top again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children. So now we're dealing with rebellious children. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Woman, after this. Yes, sir. So it says that woe to the rebellious children. So now, once again, look at our people. God also said you got to want it. And in order for you to want it, you got to seek it. And I'm not going to say God said that, but that's that's but called it, man's it says wisdom. That in that Bible. Do you know exactly where it says that? I think it's in the Hebrew session. As y'all look up, y'all up here all the way. Every up. single Saturday, yes, we are here. Every single Saturday, saying the same thing. Stop breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. But then the Bible calls us rebellious because we keep making the choice to do what the opposite of what the Bible says. Like for example, I gotta get out of here. That's fine. So, but you understand when the Bible says you're supposed to be wearing fringes, and the point of it is, I'm gonna make one last point for you. What do you mean when you say fringes? I showed you this. No. Let me let me explain. Give me one script and I'll explain why. Uh, first script is 10:13. Bring it up. One, one script and I and you read that real quick. Listen very carefully. This is the reason why we're supposed to wear fringes. Read. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. Bring it up. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. So it says that every single person on the face of this earth, we're going to all go through similar problems. Let me ask you a question real quick. Are you married? Are you married? No, I'm engaged. Man. You engaged? Okay, that's good. Listen, Mary, can't read. Right now, Mom. Rip, rip. Last one, listen, Mary, can't read. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. So now, the point I want to make real quick before you got to go. We live in Atlanta, yeah. and it's the summertime. Right. In summertime, women dress provocative, right? right? So now, 
it's easy for a man to get caught up in looking at them, those types of things like that. And then you, you see a sister that you might like, you start talking to her. One thing leads, leads to the next, you put yourself in a position to where you could potentially make a mistake. But the problem is, is that before you get to that point, guess what you gotta do? You gotta look at these fringes. So the fringes are gonna help you to remember to keep the commands. So if you don't remember nothing else, brother, before you go, before you go, if you don't remember nothing else, the reason why we have to be in the situation that we're in it's because we keep breaking God's commandments. Right. right. God gave us commandments that we're supposed to do, similar to how a father gives chores to his children. Right. When your children don't do what you're supposed to, what the father says, you end up having consequences. Yeah. That's the reason why we have to deal with what we do today. Bring it out. Because we keep breaking God's commandments. All right. Now give me uh, Isaiah 59 and 1. All right. That's fine. That's fine. All right, Bob. I read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1. Bring it out. Behold, the Lord's hands is not shortened that it cannot save. Read. Neither is neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. So it's very simple. If you follow God's commandments, we can get salvation. The only reason why Christ ain't came back to save us is because we won't get our minds right. We keep making the choices to break the commandments. God can't fix us. God can't save us. But we make the choice to do the opposite of what he says. Read. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Read it again. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. So the reason why God is not dealing with the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man is because we it's because of sin. Right. Sin. Right. Sin. Right. Your right. pastors are not going to tell you to refrain from sin as long as they're getting adopted. That's they're right. gonna preach, they're going to make it sound good and tell you every single thing that you want to hear. Bring it up. But they're not going to tell you that sisters are supposed to dress modest. Right. That we got to love each other. That we're supposed to look out for one another. Bring it that up. we have to gather together. But in one mind, one body, and one spirit. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth